Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless. Damn, one brother. I tell you, it seems, I don't know if it's me, but everywhere I go, the, the, the salutations are so dry. I don't know if it's me or what. Okay, let's try this one more time. Shalom, Israel, Most High in Christ. Bless. Ooh, I tell you. I thought it was the city, but it ain't the city. It's just, maybe it's me. Uh, for those online watching, Most High in Christ, bless you all. Uh, today's class is entitled Covetousness, Your Wants Versus Your Needs. Now, here's the, here we go. Um, when you come into this truth, or when we come into this truth, any one of us, we have to prepare ourselves and discipline ourselves to understanding that all life is meant to the service of God. And what we need to survive and to service God in many times is different from what we want. We have to understand first and foremost that everything we do is to God's service. And we have to put aside our wants versus our needs and understand that we have a mission. All right? Let's begin in uh, Matthew's the sixth chapter. And we're going to read verse 33. Mic check. Who's, who's reading for me? Officer Razis. My check, my check. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So it says what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Listen to the instruction that's given to us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. How, I'm asking you men. What do you think it means to seek the kingdom of God? Who can give me an answer? What does it mean to seek ye the kingdom of God first? All the way in the back. I don't, no, wait a second. The brother, who, put your hand up. Dog, right there. Dog shirt. Yeah, stop. You wanna, say your name and let me hear. Shalom, leadership. My name is Brother... To Rory, to seek. Uh, out of which camp? Where? Um, from this camp, IUIC uh, Austin. Yeah, I never met you before. Oh, Waco, Waco. Yes, okay, sir, good. Yes, All right. Austin, that's good. Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To Great. seek God first means put to, to put his work first. But how, okay, but how do you seek him? Uh, you seek him by studying, Very praying, good. applying. Right. What tribe are you from? Benjamin. <laughs> there we go. There we go. See, we're firing off. Right. You begin with seeking him. It says, study show thyself approve. You have to study. You seek him in the word. You seek him. You open a book and find out what are the instructions God is requiring of me. So the Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto thee. What are all these things that's talking about that's going to be added unto thee? We're going to jump up in the chapter a little bit, all right? Yes, sir. Uh, you know what? Before we read that, we're going to come back here. Go to Joshua. Good success. What's it, Joshua 8? Yeah, 1 and 8? Boy, I'm, I'm about to say 8 and 1. Joshua 1 and 8. Yes, sir. Uh, let me get there with you real quick. All right, go ahead. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So the Bible says, God said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So here we go. It says, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou, this is the reason why you meditate, that thou may us observe to do all that is written therein. Here, let me give you a little heads up. If your conversation, if your thought process is not about how to refine, define, perfect your walk on serving Christ, guess what? You're not meditating on this, you're going to get led away. Something's going to lead you away. He's saying to you, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, 
thou thy, that thou mayest observe to do all, to do according to all that is written therein. You must meditate in day and night that you might observe to do all that is according therein. I said it wrong. For then, after you do this, then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. After you do that and you meditate in the Lord and his laws, then you're going to make your way prosperous. And a lot of times we think prosperous is financial prosperous. That could be part of it, but that's not really the prosperous is. I mean, the real prosperous is you bear children. You have a godly wife. You have godly children that leaves an inheritance of your name on the earth. Because you can prosper financially, but that don't mean you godly. You can financially be prospering, but that has nothing to do with being godly with, or being right with God. So it says that I might prosper, and then thou shalt have good success. One second. I want to read something real quick. Go to Isaiah 58, uh, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 2. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. It says, they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching unto God. That should be us. We should want to understand to seek righteous. How do we better serve God? God said, if you do that, then I'm going to make your way prosperous. Then you're going to have good success of what you want. All right, so what did I have you before? Matthews? Matthew 6. Let's go back to Matthew 6. Watch this. And 6, and we read verse 33, correct? Yes, sir. I'll read that one more time again. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then he says, after you do that, I'm going to add all these things unto you. We're going to read back in the chapter and see what those things are referring to. But I want to jump back further in the chapter, and I want to start with verse... Um, how far back? Ah, I'll start with verse. Start with verse eight. Matthew chapter six and verse eight. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. It says, "Be not like unto them." The them when you read above is those men with vain repetitions as the heathen do when they pray. Like you see the, in the Catholic church, they would carry rosary beads, and they would say, Hail Mary, I don't even want to say it, but you know, I'm full of whatever, blessed among, and amongst women or whatever. And they'll keep on repeating it over and over. That's what the heathen do. You have some of these other groups, they'll take a, um, I think it's a sword, and they'll beat themselves in the back until they're bloody. Ishmael say the same prayers over and over. We read about that with Elijah, another class of the time. It says, because the Lord already know what you have need of. Now look what it says next. Verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. He said, but after this manner, therefore, pray ye. Read on. Our Father, which art in heaven. What's the first thing God wants us to do? Acknowledge our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. He wants us to acknowledge that he is holy. Hallowed be thy name. That's the first thing he's looking for. Read on. Thy kingdom come. We said, we said to God that we want your kingdom to come. Hold this. We're going to come right back here. Read verse 33. Verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Here's how you seek the kingdom of God. And what? And his righteousness. And this is how you seek his righteousness. And oh, Stop. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He's telling you how to pray. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come. The next thing is we what? We're praying for Christ's kingdom to come. Didn't we read back, hold that real quick, hold Matthew 6. Didn't we read that in Isaiah 58 just now? Isaiah 58, I think it was verse 2, if I'm correct. Yes, it was 2. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 2. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. They take delight in approaching to God. So we say back in Matthew 6, verse 10, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on in earth as it is in heaven. We're asking for God's righteousness to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, let's go to the book of Isaiah 45. Let's see what that's talking about. We're going to come right back here. Isaiah 45, verse 8. Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 8. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the what? Let the skies pour down righteousness. That's when it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We want the heavens to, to drop, to uh, the skies to pour down righteousness. Read on. Let the earth open. And let them bring forth salvation. And let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Righteousness. We want the righteousness that is in heaven to be implemented on the earth. So our prayer, when we says, let thy kingdom, it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Now, what is the will of God, men? Get, let me hear it, just quote it. Let's read it real quick for the people online. Psalms 40 and 8. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Thy what? Thy law is within my heart. So God's will is his laws. And his laws are where? In my heart. In thy heart. That's why it says meditate daily upon them. Then when you're doing that, he said you're going to have good success. Many times what happens, when we read, go back in Matthew, when we read the scriptures, and it says, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and everything else shall be added unto it, we go about another way. We say, well, we got to get our financials together, that's why I'm going to take this job and work on the Sabbath, that's why I'm going to have to do what I have to do to get it, and then I'm going to serve God. God said, no, 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 no. What you're missing, a key component is faith. He said, I'm going to take care of you. I got you. But you got to do me first. The reason why you even get up this morning is because I'm allowing you. I'm allowing you to get up. But don't chase what you want without me. Because God said, I make rich and poor. I'm the one who do all of it. You're not leaning to the source. So now why wouldn't you? Sometimes it's covetousness. Opposed to what you want, vice versa to what you need. Could I tell everybody here, for the most part, all of us, including myself, spend a bad dollar. Now, that doesn't mean you don't work hard and take care of yourself and treat yourself good. We're going to go through that throughout this class. But I'm telling you, every one of us spend a bad dollar on foolishness. The things we need is a roof overhead, food, clothing, to cover all shame. Those are chief things in life. Everything else is extra. We'll spend money on every new iPhone that come out. We'll spend money on every new sneaker that come out. And then when it's time to re-up with God, we give him great value. We give him the, we give him the bottom of it. And then we want to pray to God and tell God, God, don't work like that. Everything we have, we have because God has given to us. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right, so when it's time to give your alms, if you think hard to do it, you sow sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. But I will promise you in that day when God begins to pull your skirt and pull things away from you, you're going to start looking for him again. God, I need God. Please help me, God. He's like, when I gave you, you didn't have it. And that is the nature of Israel. 
That's how we are as a people. So where do we leave off at? Matthew 6, sir. Okay, so the first part in uh, 6 and 9 is that we have to acknowledge God is holy. Then we ask God, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want righteous to rain down. Verse 11. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. And then we ask God to give us what's sufficient for the day. Why do you think he's saying, give us this day our daily bread? Oh, one second, read on. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Read on. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So it says, give us to stay our daily bread. Why is he asking? Why is the prayer that God is instructing us to ask for is to ask for your daily bread? Who can help me out? Anybody? Why is God instructing us to just ask for our daily bread? Right here, in the front. Shalom. Um, he's asking, he's telling us to ask for our daily bread so we have just enough where we're not begging, but we're not also having abundance. Okay, and why? So now, why is that? Because when we tend to get more than what we need just to survive, we tend to turn away from the most high. Very good. God is telling us, just ask me for what you need for the day. I'm going to take care of you. I want you to always lean back on me, God is saying. I want you to always know I'm your source and power. Because I will give you too much and you will turn. Sometimes the most high, let me tell you in life. Sometimes the most high has to withhold things from you to save you from yourself. Sometimes you might think it's a punishment, like, God, why well, don't have this? He's like, listen, buddy, I'm trying to help you out. Just get what you need to eat today, and you'll be good. Tomorrow I'll be there, and I'll give you tomorrow. But give you too much, you're going to turn on me. And you know what most people are going to say? No, God, I won't. <laughs> okay, watch this. Let's see what the Bible says. We're going to come back here. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, 31. Let's see what we've done in the past. 31 verse 20. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 20. For when I shall have brought... Stop, stop one second. Okay, read. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse 20. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, that floweth with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves, and waxen fat, then will they turn unto other gods, and serve them, and provoke me, and break my covenant. So look what God said. For when I shall have brought them into the land which I swear unto their fathers, the land that floweth, uh, says, that floweth with milk and honey. What does he say about the land? The land is fertile. It produces. It produces in abundance. There's more than enough. He said, once I give you that, what happens? Flow with milk and honey, and they shall have eaten and filled themselves. Meaning what? They have enough to eat and extra. Fill themselves over than what they really even need. And fill themselves and wax in fat. Then will they turn unto other gods. This is the same one that brought us into the land. The same God that gave us a land flowing with milk and honey. He could have left our black backside in the desert. I took you out there. I gave you a land. I gave you everything you need. You eaten your fill, and then you turn your back on me. He says, wax fat, then will they turn unto other gods and serve them and provoke me 
and break my covenant. That's why it says in the prayer, what you ask for, you acknowledge me as the Holy One. You, um, you pray and you ask for God's kingdom, for my kingdom to be on earth, righteousness to be on earth. You ask for your daily bread. Learn to forgive your neighbor as you want me to forgive you. And ask that you do be not led into temptation to be moved away from what I want. Now watch this. What does this have to do with covetousness? Let's see. Let's read verse um, 21. Verse 21. And it shall come to pass when many evils and troubles are befallen them, that this song shall testify against them as a, as a witness, for it shall not be forgotten out of the mouths of their seed. For I know their imaginations, which they go about, even now, before I have brought them into the land which I swear. He said, before I even brought you into the land, I knew what you was going to do. I know the propensity that you had to do. I already know what you're going to do. You understand what the Lord is saying to us? The nature of us, he knows you can't give him too much. I want you to always need me. Because before they even get to the land, they're going to turn. So sometimes things are withheld for your good. Because you're not prepared to handle it. Now watch this. Go to the same book. Go to chapter 32. Right, 32. Um... I want you to read verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 1. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon tender herb, and as the showers upon the grass. So when he says my doctrine, the doctrine is what? Anybody know? Say amen in the back. Nobody else is here. All right, right there with the, with the black with the red let lettering on it. I can't hear you. Proverbs 4 and 2. Let's read it. Proverbs 4 and 2. Very good. The book of Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 2. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. Forsake what? Forsake ye not my law. So you're right. The doctrine is his law. Again, it's about his law. He said, Guess what? Do not forsake my law. So look what he says. My doctrine shall drop as rain. That's righteousness on earth. His kingdom on earth. Read on. My speech. My speech shall distill as the dew. As the small rain upon the tender earth. When it's, what, look up the word distill real quick. I'm going to give you guys a little something. Look up the word distill. And let's pull up that word real quick. Distill. D-I-S-T-I-L. I know this is last minute. I told you I didn't have no vocabulary words, but you should know by now I'm going to throw a curveball. Okay, look, the word distill. It says, uh, vaporizing, condensing, here's a point, similar, to purify, to refine, to filter, to treat, to process. The word I want out there is to purify. The word purify, click on it. It comes from the word pure. I don't see it pure there. Okay, you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Origin. Purist. Pure. It comes from the word pure. He said, my what? My speech. What is God's speech? What is God's speech? The same people. Is there anybody else in here but these guys from Waco? Oh, you're in the oh, oh, in the back. There we go. I see, Waco's the only ones that study, it seems like. His speech is the law. His, um, that's right. This is, God's, you got, this is God's speech right here. This is it right here. It says his words, his speech is what? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. No, no. My, oh, yeah, that, read on. 
My speech shall distill as the dew. He says, my laws are pure. We know the scripture on that. I forgot which one. Where's that again? He says, my law is pure. No, it says in Titus. I thought it was one in Proverbs. That may be it. Okay. Every word of God. Give me that one in Titus then if that's the one. That's, one, that's not one yes, I was sir. Thinking. Titus chapter 1 and verse 15. Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. No, no that's not the one. That's it. That sounds like it. That sounds like it. I thought it was in Proverbs 30. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Give me a second. Let me get there with you. Now, what, what, I'm telling you, watch how this Bible connect. Proverbs 30 and 5. Watch this real quick. Read that. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Stop. Every what? Every word of God is pure. Read on. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. He's a shield unto them that trust in him. Let me ask you a question. If you trust in God, didn't God say, Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and everything else shall be added unto thee? So if his words are pure, then guess what happened? Jump down to verse 8. Verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee. So he says, give us this day our daily bread. Feed us food convenient for me. Give me exactly what I need. I know you're going to give it to me, God, because your word is pure. It's going to happen. You said it. He said, I'm telling you, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. Do me first, and I will make sure you're okay. <laughs> Things don't work out is because we want to do it in a reverse way. We want to be motivated by greed, by covetousness. And I'm telling you something, that spirit of covetousness would lead to betrayal. Hatred, murder, thievery. Covetousness will lead to those things. So we're going to come back in probably. That was very good because it just happened to link in the same chapter. Um, um, 32, verse 2 again. Yes. Deuteronomy, chapter 32, and verse 2. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender earth. And as the showers upon the grass, because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto your God. We don't. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. Now, now watch this. Jump to verse 15. He's all that. And guess what? Verse 15. But just run, wax fat. Stop. Even though he's a God of truth and his word and his justice without iniquity, just and right, what happened? But Jeshron waxed fat. With all that, Jeshron, the word Jeshron means the upright ones. That's referring to us. We're the upright ones. It says, Jeshron has waxed fat. And what? And kicked. And, uh, and kicked. With all that, God said, I gave you and you upright ones, you wax fat and you turned on me. Read on. Thou art waxen fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. And you lightly esteemed God, the rock of all salvation. He's like, I've given you everything. When you read the verse before that, he said, I made flinty rock, honey, and whatever it says. So I give you everything you wanted. And then you turn around and you lightly esteem me like I'm insignificant. Hold this. Go to the book of Hosea. Oh, you can let this go. I'm, I'm for the. Yeah, go to Hosea 4. Watch this. What verse, Bishop? Let me get there with you. Hosea 4. Yes, sir. Um, I think it's like 6. Give me, I got to look at it. Bear with me. Oh, I passed it. Okay, I don't know why I can't find Hosea right now. There you go. Hosea 4, verse. 
Oh, verse 7. Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 7. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. As they what? As they were increased, so they sinned against me. God already know that in us. He says, as they increased, and when I gave them, they sinned against me. Therefore, will I charge their, change their glory into shame. God said, I'm going to change your glory into shame. As I gave you, you could you you lightly esteem me. I'm telling you something I've witnessed over the years, and I've seen in my life experiences, God time and time again sending blessings on myself and other people, and I've seen those things fall apart in people's lives. He said, I've given you, I've given you health. I've given you my wisdom on how to navigate that if I give you anything, any kind of substance, you'll know the right thing to do with it and cannot be content. And God said, man, I'm going to take it away from you, leave you. So read that, finish that. Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 7. Verse 8. Verse 8. They eat up the sin of my people and they set in their heart on their iniquity. Read on. And there shall be like people like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their doings. So God said, I'm going to reward you for your doings, even though I gave you. Read on. For they shall eat and not have enough. They what? For they shall eat and not have enough. When you had, you wasn't content, and you turned. So he said, I'm going to make you lack now. You're not going to be sad. You're going to eat, but you're not going to have enough. That's why the most High a lot of time jack us up, and he's still giving us a chance to repent. Why? Because with all that you had, you didn't do the right thing. So what happened? You had all that you need in him. But that's not what you wanted. You wanted to serve another God. You have a wife. That ain't good enough. You want another wife or another man's wife. You say, I give you a roof over your head. That ain't enough. I'm going to start breaking the Sabbath to make more money. You don't have people in the world, they don't have enough. What do they do? So selling crack, murdering, stealing. Patience. Righteousness coupled with contentment. We're gonna read that. It's great gain. Be patient. God is gonna give you all the things that you need to survive. And when you got extra, He's gonna tell you what to do with that too. Read on. They shall commit whoredom. Read again from the top from 10. Yes, sir. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 10. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase because they have left off to take heed to, take heed to the Lord. To take off to the yeah, says, they shall not increase, but they have left off to take heed to the Lord. They left off to listen to God. They will not increase. So what's going to happen? You're going to begin to decrease. Sometimes we take for granted what we have in front of us. I know the situation of a brother who wanted more children. He just wanted children so bad. So bad he wanted more children. And he had children, but he wanted more. And he went about trying to get more children the wrong way. He was evil in his moving. And guess what he has now? He don't got no children. The ones he had, they gone now. He ain't got no boo-hoo. No children now. Wasn't content with the ones he had. Good kids. Wasn't content with them. More than more. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's go from that real quick um, to Sirach 14. Mosai, slowly pull your life apart and you're not even able to see it. You can't see. Your spiritual eye is shut. Life is falling apart right before you. Why? That covetousness. What you have, what you want versus what you need. Um, Sirach 14 verse 9. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 9. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Read on. And the iniquity of the wicked dried up his soul. And the iniquity will begin to dry up his soul. 
His iniquity will begin to dry up his soul. Your covetous ways begin to dry up your spirit. You lose, you lose understanding. You become twice dead. Read on. A wicked eye envied his bread. A wicked eye will envy his own bread. Read on. And he is a niggard at his table. He's not satisfied with what's in front of him. He'll be a niggard at his own table. You ever see, you don't send me, sidebar, I'm going to touch this in another vein. If you ever invited to a, a person's home and they're setting out food to feed you, if the person who food it is is reaching and scrambling for his food before he feeds you, he don't got the spirit on him. You feed your guest. Some people, they're like, I got to get the big piece of chicken. You invite them to your house. They're there at your house. And you fighting for, I'm going to get five slices of pizza. <laughs> I see that in Israel. Sidebar, another story, another something I'm going to tell you. I see. Anybody ever experienced that before? Because I have. Like, damn. Shit is, stuff is yours. Relax. <laughs> Why are you, you like, you know, they don't, I got to get more. I, I pay for it. So I always say this. One of my biggest pet peeves, and we dealt this from years ago, on high holy days. We always have collections, you know, collect money for high holy days. And, and it always seemed, used to be like, like fighting with people to give donations and like, like to, to help purchase the food. Like, for some reason, a Negro could not do this motion. They could, that, that arm would, they would not just put their hand, and they always look to see what, it, like, well, you can the money, look and see how much you give it, so they know what to give. I'm like, oh, boy, man, you guys are. But here's the thing, afterwards, and this is true, afterwards, they would be out buying Hennessy out in the restaurant spending on food, and I'm like, for the Lord's Day, we could, and I'm talking about the same day after the Sabbath, out eating, drinking. I'm like, and you think hard to give. So I tell you what I watch. I watch how people eat. And if you eat from Whole Foods and H-E-B, and when the feast day come, you shopping at Walmart, you evil as hell. I see people, when it's time to shop for the feast day, all day, S-H-I-T, be great value. Meanwhile, you be seeing him eating, and, and eating all this grass-fed this. But for Israel, they give you the, I ain't going to finish that, but you know what I mean. I watch that, I watch that people. People be niggas with their, with their, they think hard to do. That stuff like that is an evil spirit. And then you want to pray to God. All right, so those that do that, you better stop going to great. Now, if you eat, don't get me wrong. If you shop at Walmart and that's what you eat, fine, cool. But if that's not where you shop regularly and you're going to go to all these and try to give them some more retarded chicken, shame on you. Shame on you. You're evil as hell. You won't serve it to yourself, but you'll serve it to other people. I'm going to feed you what I eat. All right. I don't know. I don't know why that's on my mind for. <laughs> oh, mad cow disease. They'll feed you that stuff. I mean, while they eat grass fed beef. No. Right, let's go back. Let me stop. Okay. Where do we read from? Uh, read, read, read 9 and 10 one more time. We're going yes, to jump sir. In. Sirach, chapter 14 and verse 9. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Some covetous man is not satisfied with his portion. You know, the scripture says, you have the poor with you always. Some people it's not going to have. A covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. You know why he's not satisfied? Because he's always looking at what somebody else's have. Always wonder why, trying to trying to calculate his pocket. You ever see some people trying to watch other people's pockets? Why they got that? Why it's going on with that? Look, they got a new car. Look at this move. Well, how you did that? I don't know why he deserved that. For them. Who does that? <laughs> does stuff like that. He's never satisfied with his portion. And the iniquity of the wicked dried up his soul. And the iniquity of the wicked dried up his soul. Read on. A wicked eye envied his bread, and he is a niggard at his table. He's a niggard at his own table. Nigga at his own table. Watch this, Jeremiah 5. Five, verse 25. 
Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Your sins have what? And your sins have withholding good things from you. And your sins have withholding good things from you. So you wonder why things don't work sometimes? Because your iniquity, your iniquity has turned away these things. And your sins have withholding good things from you. Now watch, when good things are held back from people, you know what happens? It's held back from them for what reason? Why is it held back? Their sins, their iniquity. That's why it's held back. Now watch what it says. Read on. Verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. So uh, among my people they are found wicked men. Read on. They lay wait as he that sitteth snares. They set a trap. They catch men. So now... Good things are withheld from you from your iniquity. And now because you can't get the things you think you want, and that's because of your own ways, now you begin to snare, set snares and traps to destroy people. You understand that? Maybe if you just write with God, God will bless you. Now, you don't want to be right with God, and now you're going to lay a snare to try to destroy somebody else or get what they have. Why? You was never content. You lightly esteemed the rock of your salvation. God said, now I'm going to withhold from you. I'm going to tell you right now, sometime, well, I'll get back to you in a second. Let's read on. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Okay, now it says, as a cage full of birds... So are their houses full of deceit. As a cage full of birds, so are their houses. Whose houses? Who can explain that first? Who understands that? Uh, Noah? Read it again. Verse 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great. And waxen rich. Um, so now the, the example they're asking, the example they're giving, it says, as a cage full of birds, is the same way their house is full of deceit. Who understands? Okay. What they mean is um, the, the, the cage is full. That's mean you watching everybody else. You watching everybody else. I mean, you, you looking at everybody else but your own self. Mm. And... Nope. Okay. Right behind him. Shalom, leadership. Uh, as a cage full of birds. Re read that precept again, bro. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. So as a cage full of birds, so is a house full of deceit. So it's an old saying, birds of a feather flock together. So the house full of deceit is the same thing as you around the uh, wicked people uh, just like yourself. Okay. Good. Now watch this. Since you said that, Zion, you on. What's your name? Brother Joshua. Joshua, good. Watch this. Let me hear Zion. Uh, can you reread can you reread the verse above it as well? Because it kind of ties in together. Yes, sir. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 26. For among my people are found wicked men. They lay wait as he that set its snares. They set a trap. They catch men. So these, this wicked person, they set snares and they set traps in order to catch men. The next verse. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. So a bird, for example, like a vulture, how they would feed off of those that are either weak or sickly. They'll pick at them and use them in order to for their own well-being. So the same way a cage is full of birds, it says, as a cage is full of birds, um, so are their houses full of deceit. Their, their houses are full of deceit. The way they build their house is feeding off of those who are weak or... Yeah, those who are weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, they, okay. They, feed, they bring other people down in order to 
Okay, but between both of you on it, both of you, yeah, you're right. Go to our Revelations real quick. We read about that hateful bird in Revelations. I'm going to tie it with this. Revelations 18. So from 18 to 2. For, so it says, from among my people there are found wicked men. They lay wait as he had set its snares. They set traps. They catch men. As a cage, as a cage full of of birds saw their houses full of deceit. Watch this. Revelation 18 and 2. Revelations chapter 18 and verse 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. What is Babylon the great talking about? Just say it out loud. America, read on. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils read on. and the hold of every foul spirit. And a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Right. America was based and built off of covetousness. They stole something from another people. They stole land. They murdered. You understand that? So when it says here, let's go back. As a cage full of hateful, let me say, as a cage full of birds saw their houses full of deceit. The same way this man whose iniquities has withholding good things from him, he's full of covetousness, deceit. Read on. Verse 20, Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 27. As a cage is full of birds, so are their houses full of deceit. Therefore they are become great and waxen rich. They are waxen fat. They shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, Yet they prosper, and the right of the needy do they not judge. So look what it says. As a cage is full of birds, so are the houses full of deceit. Therefore, they are become great and waxen rich. Because of their hatred, because of their sins, I should say, good things will withheld from them. But yet, they still are waxen rich. Why? By the destruction of other men. By taking, by coveting. It says, they are wax and fat, they shine. Yea, they overpass the deeds of the wicked. Saying this, they're super wicked. They judge not the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper. They're, and the right of the needy do they not judge. They do not rain down proper judgment. The fatherless, they do not judge the cause of the fatherless. What do they do? They take advantage of them. If you don't have a father there to defend you, what's the saying? You have people that take advantage of them. Guess I'll give you an example today, just one example. All people out there in the world who's not welcome to the truth, they are the fatherless right now. They have not come back to the father, which is God. And the world takes advantage of them. Here's one. Payday loans. Lending you a paycheck and it charge you 35% interest. If you got to borrow the money, you're already broke. 50% interest. You borrow, you borrow $10, you owe $20. Well, I didn't have 10 so I have 20 They put you in despair. And Israel do that to each other also. Here's you take advantage of the fatherless, drug dealers, taking little boys off their corners who don't have no father to defend them and put them on the corner so they can get rich. Nobody to defend them. So watch. I want to jump back up. Um, verse 25, because I said something earlier. Verse yes, 25. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 25. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. Okay, watch this. Let's go back in the chapter now. Um, start with verse 17, read quick. Verse 17. And they shall eat up thine harvest and thy bread, which thy sons and thy daughters should eat. They shall eat up thy flock and thy herb. They shall eat up thy vines and thy fig trees. They shall impoverish thy fenced cities, wherein thou wast trusted, 
with the sword. Okay, this is talking about the other nations. He's, he talking about the destruction coming from Nebuchadnezzar. But it says they're going to eat up your stuff. Why would they do that? Read verse 3. Verse 3. O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth that has stricken them, but they have not grieved, that has communed them, but they have refused to receive correction. That's why. They refuse to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. They have refused to return to you, God. That's why their iniquities have withholding good things from them. Jump on down to verse 18. Verse 18. Nevertheless, in those days, saith the Lord, I will not make a full end with you. He said, in those days, I will not make a full end with you, not fully destroy you. Read on. And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, wherefore doeth the Lord our God all these things unto us? Then shalt thou answer them. Like as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. He said, therefore, you're going to go into captivity, and you're going to serve strangers in a land that's not yours. That's where we at today. That's where we at. Read on. Declare this in the house of Jacob, and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. They could not see and understand the blessing they had when God was their power. They lightly esteemed him. Read on. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord. Will ye not tremble at my presence? God said, you're not going to tremble as my presence? You don't fear me? Read on. Which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass. And though the waves thereof toss themselves, they... Yet can they not prevail. He said, so, you, he said, can't you see that the waves don't go beyond a certain point because of me? Do you understand? God is saying, if I decide not to put a barrier between you and that water, that water will keep on flowing and drown you out. You don't give me my just due respect? Read on. Excuse me. And though the waves there have tossed themselves, yet they cannot prevail. Though they roar, yet... Can they not pass over it? He said, you can't see my power in that? Read on. But this people hath revolting and a rebellious heart. They have revolted and gone. Neither say they in their heart. Let us now fear the Lord our God that have giveth rain, both the former and the latter. And he, says, he said, they don't fear the God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. What is, what does he mean by giveth rain, both the former and the latter? Who knows that? Don't they fear God that giveth rain, both the former and the latter? Okay, try it. You can try it. Shalom, Lady Is it talking about uh, the time of Noah when it started raining and it flooded about? Nope. He giveth rain, both the former and latter. Who knows? All the way in the back. God give us rain, basically for our, for our crops can grow, so we can have food for our, for the, our former for our forefather. Very and good. Our latter forefather. Mm, you you right into the last part. Okay. You right into the last part. He gave us rain for our crops in the former and the latter. Who else? Right there. <coughs> Shalom leadership. Uh, I don't recall the the precept. Just tell but, me what it means. But uh, it's going off into like. What the churches say today about the, the tithes and the offering. You know, you know what, what it's talked about. Uh, Can I tell you something? You're right, but that's, I want you to give me, tell me what the former's talking about, what the latter's talking about, uh, specifically. So you're not wrong, but you're just not saying the words I want to hear. Oh, Who else want to try? Last person. Uh, Zion, go ahead. Former and latter. Uh, the former is talking about the Feast of First Fruits, and the latter is the Feast of Ingathen. Right. The, the, beginning, the beginning of the harvest of the year, that's the former rain, and the latter is the end of the year. When we bring, and now it goes back to what you were saying, brother, because then those rain come in, we harvest, and we bring the Feast of First Fruits to the Lord, and then the Feast of Ingathen, we bring those last fruits of the year to the Lord. He said, don't you know I give you rain for that? Very good. Read on. That giveth rain, both the former. I lost, I lost my place. What verse? Uh, verse 24, Bishop. Thank you. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 24. Neither say they in their heart, let us now fear the Lord our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. 
in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Read on. Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholding good things from you. So what did our iniquities turned away from us? The most high given us food to sustain ourselves. That's why some people live a beggar's life. You got a, you online, beg, what's it called again? What, what they do that when they try to raise money online? What's it called again? GoFundMe. Stupid dude, GoFundMe. 40 years old for the doing GoFundMe's, trying to, trying to pay a light bill. Why? Good things have been withheld from you. Watch this. Chief things. What is that against? Rock 29? Surah 29. Yep. Surah chapter 29 and verse 21. One second. Yes, sir. I don't know. I'm moving slow today. Hold on. Let me try to keep up with you. Surah 29 verse, what verse? 21, Bishop. Let me look real quick. Read. Surah chapter 29 and verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. Those are the things that God withhold from some people that got a covetous spirit, that got a spirit that rebels against his commandment. The chief things, the most important things in life is what? The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. Not PlayStation, not a cell phone, not BT, not rims, not go fronts, whatever else people, not a, not a, not, not a bottle of liquor, Not weave, <laughs> not Manny and Petties. Nah, we don't want you busted feet, ladies. Talk that, talk, strike that. Yeah, that's a chief thing about you. Keep your feet there. You want that thing scraping me like daggone sandpaper? Hell no. Yeah, that's chief thing about us. But you understand what I'm saying. The chief things in life. Can I actually? Don't raise your hand in here. But for every one of us that have a home to go home to. I don't care how mean the cottage is. For every one of us that got our health, that got food to eat, that got clothes to cover our shame, you understand you blessed by God? There's somebody right now that is underneath 35, this highway right now with no shoes on and sleeping in a cardboard box. And that could have been many of us out here. God just started cutting off avenues from you, cutting the stuff off from you. Cutting. He said, but I'm not going to make a full end of you. So cutting off avenues. So then you got to put in perspective how good life really is. But it becomes evil to some people because when they get things withholding, they turn. They turn and it begin to destroy. So let's read on. Surat chapter 29 and verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. Jump on down to, i read on. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage. Have your little place than you need to live off somebody. Why, why is it that you would have to live off somebody? The most high is withholding things from you. Things are being held. You got to ask yourself why. Most I said, seek ye the kingdom of heaven first, and everything shall be added unto thee. Take no thought. He said, I'm going to, we're going to get back to that in a second, because I didn't read that part. I'm going to give you, take no thought. I'm going to make sure you are right. Better is what? Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage. Better to have your own. Read on. Than delicate fare in another man's house. Than live in another man's house. Read on. Be it little or much. Be it what? Be it little or much. Hold thee contended that thou hear not the reproach of thy house. It says, be it little or much, hold thee contented. What does it mean? Who knows what it means? Hold thee contented. Right here, officer. Mm, yeah, no, no, somebody, let me share another word. Use another synonym right there. One, either one of you two. Shalom, it means to appreciate what you have. Right. Be appreciative, be content, be suffice, be happy with what you have. I can tell if you got a mean cottage, 
but know for certainty, if it's pouring rain outside and you could put a key in that door and turn it, and you could walk inside, man, you blessed. When the elements are cold outside, it's raining, and you got a door to walk into, trust me, at that moment, you're doing good. If it be little or much, hold thee contented. Read on. That thou hear not the reproach of thy house. Read on. For it is a miserable life to go from house to house. For where thou art a stranger, thou darest not to open thy mouth. Now watch this. Go from that to uh, Sirach 40. Sirach 40, uh, verse 8. Sirach chapter 40, verse 8. Such things happen unto, uh, unto all uh, flesh. No, I'm sorry. Um, Balthiness. Um, uh, 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 verse 18. Re read verse 17 first. Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 40, verse 17. Bountifulness is as a most fruitful garden, and mercifulness endureth forever. Mm -hmm. To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. It's a sweet life. To what? To labor and to be content with that a man hath is a sweet life. So if you're not content, content. if you're not content with what you have, your life is bitter. You're always looking at what somebody else have, wondering why they have, talking about them, what they have. Who, who spends their life looking at other people and just living off, just seething with, oh, God, I ain't got it. That's a, that's a miserable life. Read on. But he that findeth a treasure is above them both. But he that findeth a treasure is above them both. Go from that First Timothy 6. And we're going to come back to Matthews and begin. 1 Timothy 6. Uh, yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Hold on, hold on. I'm in the wrong book. I'm in Corinthians. I'm sorry. Just read. I'm, I'm there with you. Yes, sir. Read on, Bishop. Yeah, go ahead. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. <laughs> you better wrap your mind around that, that when you leave this earth, you're not going to carry nothing out. So then why stress yourself? Does it mean not to aspire and do good for yourself? No. But you better seek the kingdom of heaven first. Let it be set up a right. Here you go. You get some people that become super wealthy. And they blow through all that money and end up in a worse state because they had no wisdom how to operate. You get, all, you get people with all that money. Here's a good example. R. Kelly got all that money, all that. And what did he use that money for? To buy chains and dog food to feed women and underage girls. That's what he, all the money he got. He got out the slums of Chicago to be a pedophile, a rich pedophile. That's what he, that's what, that's what he, at the, and I know he's sitting there right now in prison kicking himself. Well, other people are kicking him, literally, but he's figuratively kicking himself. That's what you did? Read on. And having food and raiment, let us be wherewith content. With what? And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Learn to be content. What you have versus what you want. Learn to be content. Those are the chief things. Read on. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. But they that desire to be rich fall into temptations. You know what I mean? You know to desire, you deeply yearn for riches. When you have that all in your mind, when you desire something... That's what you do all day. That's all you think about. How am I get it? How am I get it? You desire that. They fall into what? But they that will be rich fall into temptation. Read on. And they snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. It drowned men in destruction and perdition. Read on. 
For the love of money is the root of all evil. He tells you, Lord, let you know the love of money is the root of all evil. Read on. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Read on. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. One, two, thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now watch this, verse 11. But thou, O, it says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. What did he tell you to do? Learn to be content with what you have, and you're going to have to fight the good fight. Because your situation may not be another man's situation financially. Watch this. Same chapter. Go back to verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. Read on. And they that have believing masters... Let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. So what is it telling you? Here in Israel, you're going to have some people that you might work for. You might have some people that's over you. It says, what? He says, and they that have believing masters, that don't mean you a slave, but you have some people that you answer to. They have believing masters. Let them not despise them. Why would you despise them for? Why would you despise them? For what reason? Let them despise them because they are brethren, because they're believers, but rather do them service. Rather do your job because they are faithful and beloved partakers of the benefits. Which benefits? The one God is issuing out. They're partakers of the benefits. And God may have given them more than he's given you. But they're partakers of the benefits. It says, these things teach and exhort. He said, these things you've got to teach and exhort. Now what happens? You're supposed to learn how to be patient and be thankful for what you got. These things teach and exhort. Then what happens? The next verse. Verse 3. If any man teach otherwise. So now somebody might come among you and try to tell you, well, look, look, he paying you this, and but, but look at him. He driving that, and look what he have. Man, learn to be content with what you got. Why you worry about what he driving? You don't know his mission or how he got to where he got and why God gave him that for? That's how we are. We be looking at other people's pocket and wondering why they got. Other than catching the blessing that you have. Let me ask a question. Was not Solomon one of the most wealthy men, if not the wealthiest king in his time? Which one of you want Solomon's life? <laughs> Who wants Solomon? Who wants David's life? These men have vast wealth. But it says, but what? Verse, if any man teach otherwise, read on. And consent not to wholesome words. Even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. So somebody will try to come in your air and put a spirit on you. You don't, I don't know why you're working for him, why you're doing that for. You shouldn't have to do that. How much is he making? He paying you that, so you know he's making this amount and this, that, and that builds a spirit of covetousness on you. Other than saying, thank you for what I have. And when God wants you to have more, God said in 1 Samuel 2, I make rich, I make poor. God said, I make rich and poor. So you working for a man and that's his job and you agree to that side, work the job. And if God wants you to be rich, he's going to make it where you're rich. And if he don't want you to be, you just ain't going to be rich. Just is what it is. What, you're going to be mad? <laughs> what are you doing? He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, Evil surmising. That's where all that covetous brings about envy, strife, railings. Perverse, I'm reading the next verse. Per, I want to read myself. Perverse disputers of men of corrupt mind, 
destitute of truth, supposing that gain is guidance from such withdraw thyself. Get away, because you'll have men among you that's going to try to put a spurt on you to have a covetousness. And if you got an itch in ear, you give in to that. You don't worry about stuff like that. So, when it says, but godness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out. Because you're going to die with, you're going to die and take nothing with you. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Why do you have food and raiment? Because the person you're working for is plying you a salary that you could buy food and raiment. Learn to be happy. But they that will be rich will fall into temptation and snare. But if you have a covetous eyes, you're going to fall into, you're going to fall into temptation and snare. You're going to start stealing, start taking, start plotting. Why? Maybe it's withheld from you because of your iniquities. Could it, ever, could it be that? Uh, says, Verse 10. Read. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith mm -hmm. and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Mm -hmm. But thou, O good, O man of God. But you, O man of God. Read on. Flee these things. And F flee those things. Read on. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, Patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. One, two, thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. But, but he says what you should be focused on is eternal life. Fight a good fight. To fight of what? That spirit of envy and greed and covetousness. Be content with what you have opposed to what you want. You got food and raiment. Be happy. Be appreciative. Everybody following? Okay. Um, back to Proverbs. Uh, I'll read me Matthews. Back to Proverbs um, 30. Watch this. Proverbs 30. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you find it amongst men, but even women, they find it very catty. Look what she got. I don't know what she get. I used to see sisters talking about, where you get that from? Oh, I, you know, she don't want to tell where you got the outfit from because I don't want her to have the same outfit. Oh, gosh. You can't be serious. Hold this real quick. Let's read Sirach 10. We're going to come back here. Sirach 10. <laughs> why you got that on? That's one of the reasons why a bishop implemented that we all wear the same thing to take away that envy and the cattiness and that we could focus on serving the Most High God instead of, instead of become a fashion so who look cute. Look cute on the inside, but out, on, on the outside, but inside, woo. 10. Um, 10 and 9. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 9. Why is the earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one setteth his own soul to sell. He's so bad one. Thank you, Bishop. He's so bad wants to gain that he will sell his own soul. He'll lose salvation. Because he's so bad as greedy and want. I'm telling you sometimes real talk. I'm telling you, things are withheld from people to save you from yourself. And sometimes things are withheld. You're like, but why? But why can I do that? Why? Trust me, I'm trying. It's for your good. They will sell their own soul. Some people, listen. Some people are so covetous for money. I'm trying to do my words right before I say more. Some I'm going to say women, but I mean men too, but I'm, I'm going to use women. Some women are so covetous for money, they will go on, what's the thing where everybody pay to watch naked women now? Only fair. How you know about that? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cap. 
Whoa, he said that real quick. <laughs> Panic camera over there. That's who said it. Yeah, she. What's it called again? Only fans, right. And, and they would shake their behind for money. They would show their butt just to get a dollar. I was watching something online on YouTube, and these girls was uh, explaining who they were sleeping with and how they slept this guy. For what. I'm like, whoa. For money. How about just get a job? You know what? They're not content with a job. Not content with a nine to five. So let's read that one more time again. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 9. Why is the earth and ashes proud? There's not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such an one set it his own soul to sell. One will sell his own soul for sale. In other words, your eternal life has a price for some people. You'd rather live in this kingdom and obtain riches and lose your soul. Some people think it's worth losing their soul for. Watch this. Verse 5. Verse 5. And the hand of God is a prosperity of man. Do you understand in the hand of God is the prosperity of man? In the hand of God is where your prosperity? You don't have to sell your soul. If God wants you prosperous, you're going to be prosperous. That's in God's hand. He says that in, I keep on quoting it. I make rich. Psalms, uh, First Samuel 2. I make rich, I make poor. I, the Lord, do all things. I hope I'm saying it right, but you know what I mean. Ah, no, no, no. I'm going to get back. But in the hand of God is the prosperity of man. Read on. In the hand of God is the prosperity of man. And upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor. And upon the person of the scribe shall he lay his honor. On who he decides he's going to lay his honor on them. What did I quote before that I was asking for? Uh, Proverbs 30. Watch this. Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, verse verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Wow, that's us. Judgment is wax fat and they kick. Lest I be full and deny thee. He understood. You know what? Lord, don't give me too much lest I be full and I deny you, Lord. Just give me enough so I can get by. I want to always know that I need you, that I understand that you're the source. Read on. Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. And Lord, give me enough so I don't have to steal. And I end up taking your name in vain. I end up sinning against you because I don't have. Read on. Accuse not a servant unto his master. Lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. Now watch this. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. So what does it mean, accuse not a servant unto his master? Why would you accuse a servant unto his master? Now remember, we just read about a master in, in, um, in Timothy, right? It says, you're supposed to serve your master. Someone says, accuse not a servant unto their master. What does that mean? Anybody? Not you, Zion. Somebody else. <laughs> Excuse me. Accuse not a servant unto his master. Okay, watch this. I'm going to help you all through this one. You pray to God and say, God, don't give me too much that I deny thee. And don't give me too little that I sin against thee. Right? Now it comes back and says, accuse not a servant Unto his master. Let's make the servant an employee. Don't, don't, I'm just going to make it. Don't accuse an employee unto his boss. Why would somebody accuse somebody to their boss? Why would they do that for? Noah? Shalom, Bishop. Let's if they steal something from the, the master? No, not the, not the servant. Why would, you accuse, why would somebody accuse something? Why would somebody, on the back, all the way in the back. Why would they accuse because you want to shine over him. Oh, there you go. He want to shine over him. He want to make him look back. Hold that. First Maccabees 4. Watch it. Uh, First Maccabees 7. Watch this. First Maccabees 7. Verse 4. 
First Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 4. So his host slew them. Now when Demetrius was set, up, set upon the throne of his kingdom, there came unto him all those wicked and ungodly men of Israel, having alchemists who was desirous to be high priest for their captain. Now watch this. It says, now look what it says. So, that was verse 4, right? Yes, sir. Okay, it says, so his host slew them. Now when Demetrius was set up on the throne of his kingdom, Demetrius was a Greek. I don't want to go through all that. There came unto him all the wicked and ungodly men of Israel. They went to the enemy. Having, it says, uh, having alchemists who was desirous to be high priest for their captain. So this man, alchemist, he desired to be the high priest. Read on. Read Verse on. 6. And they accused the people. And they what? And they accused the people. To the kings. And they accused the servant to the master because the Greeks were over us. They accused Judas and the men to the king. What are trying to do? Make him look bad because they want position. He was willing to sell out his own people to the white man or the red man because he coveted, desired the high priesthood. You know what he means? He was willing. He wanted him to put him to death. I want to get him out the way. That's what covetousness do. Read on. And they accused the people to the king, saying, Judas and his brethren have slain all thy friends and driven us out of our own land. And read on. Now therefore send some man whom thou trustest, and let him go and see what havoc he hath made among us and in the king's land, and let them punish them with all them that aid them. Yo, this guy was a betrayer. This guy was a betrayer. He betrayed his own people lives. Let's go back to what I was reading in Proverbs uh, 13 about accuse. Um, Proverbs 30. Verse 10. Read again. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 10. Accuse not a servant unto his master. That's you being, being a false witness. Now, why would you have to accuse him to make him look bad? Because good things are being withheld from you. God is holding things back because you're evil. And now you turn. Hope you all understand that. Read on. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. And you be found guilty before the Lord, lest he curse you and tell, tell God, punish him for what he's doing. Read on. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There's a generation that cursed their father and not blessed their mother. Now, how are we... I'm going to see if anybody can put it together. How are we now talking about a generation that don't curse his fa that curses father and not bless his mother? What does that have to do in the scheme of what we're talking about? Read between the lines. Who can help me out? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, right there. I need a pen. Shalom. Uh, I believe it's talking about like the family where the father is not at the home and uh, the father gets put down or what have you and the mother is, is praised because she's there. She's present in, in the child's life. Somebody else? No. Nope. Give it to the brother next one. Yeah, next one. Okay, before, okay, go ahead. Let me hear you first. Uh, the children, they're not being raised, so they don't have anybody to look up to, so they're... Okay, watch this. Stay right there. We said, remove from me vanity and lies. Don't make us too rich that we deny thee, too poor that we sin against thee. Don't accuse a servant before his master. Be a false witness to destroy him, right? There's a generation that will curse his father and not bless his mother. Now, when we're talking about them as far as having a covetous spirit and things not working out because of their sins, withholding things from them, now, try to tie that in with cursing your father. There's going to be a generation that don't keep the commandments. Okay. You, you, that, okay. You, you're right. I can explain. If you have 
if you have too much, you begin to rebel against God, right? If you have too much, many kids will turn their back on their parents, will become disrespectful to their parents. They're like, I have. No, I'm, I'm good. No more questions. No more, no more answers. They will turn their backs. That should never be courtesy to your children. Be to their courtesy. They'll turn their back. To hell with their mother. If they have. And if they're poor and they don't have anything, they feel entitled. And when they don't get from their parents, they curse them and disrespect them because they don't have. You understand? Yes, sir. So it's good. That's why I said when you read, you got to keep it in the vein of what it's talking about. If these scriptures are, are instruction that's in real life, how many of us black people, Israelites, but I mean black people, have experienced that where you see family members turn up on their parents, demanding from them, well, why you ain't doing that for me? Negro, you 32 with great chest hair. You and what you need, Negro. You were here playing video games, and my you got to be joking. He calling, we calling work. Yeah, turn off the cable. Cable company, turn off. My son is downstairs playing video games. He's watching porn. He's thirty-two years old in my house. But dad, but dad, <laughs> that that'll never be in my that'll never be in my house. Look, please, I will burn the place down if I. You got to be joking. Hell, mom, mom, where's dinner? Nigga, go get a job and go, do what you, you talking about? <laughs> Let's go on. Thank you. Um, what was my train of thought? Read on. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 12. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. And their eyelids are lifted up. Right. It says, there's a generation that's pure in their own eyes and yet not watch from the filthiness. They're deceived. They're pure in their own eyes. They think they deserve. I'm a gift from God. We read that. In, I forgot that's Matthew somewhere. Where they say that they believe that they're a gift from God to their parents. They're lofty in their own eyes. It says, there's a generation, oh, that's lofty in their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. They're proud. Because in some cases... They have, give me that real quick. Um, it's in Timothy's, um, uh, 1 Timothy 6, when it talks about um, the love of money. Same chapter. Watch this. We'll come right back here. Uh, remind me to come right back here. Yes, sir. Um, 1 the, Timothy 6 and... Let me think of the word. I, I got to see it. I got to see the word. Um, oh, here we go. 1 Timothy six seventeen. Yes, sir. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches. Because people be getting lofty and they be trusting uncertain riches. Yeah, you can be rich today and have all the money. And then you have people who turn up on their parents, on each other, because they got it. But God may require life tonight. Don't trust in uncertain riches. The only riches you can depend on that's going to be durable riches is going to be God's wisdom. That's the only riches. That, and that rich is the one that make everything else work. Because you got some rich fools out there. Dude, become rich, and now what do they do? They have all these hurtful lusts. You get rich, and now you're smoking crack. Remember Richard Pryor? Well, some of you may be young, but Richard Pryor, his problem wasn't that he was free basing or smoking crack. He said, that wasn't my problem. My problem was that I could afford to do it. He said, because I, I always had money. He wasn't, he wasn't buying a 20-piece and then, you know, three hours later trying to sell some cans. The dude buying a quarter key. I need another quarter key. Bring it over. And, and he said, that was his problem. Abuse his body. Dudes be abusing a body in the strip club, putting dollar bills in a crack with some filthy whore at behind. Oh, sweaty titties in your face. You nigga, you nasty as hell. 
go sucked on by 15 dudes before you pay, you know, pay for that. I mean, men, men are nasty. <laughs> nasty. Those sweaty, battle-ridden titties in your face. You think got bullet shots and all kind of you know. All right. Read that again. Yes, sir. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God give us all things richly to enjoy. So he'll give you. He'll give you money to enjoy and things that you have. Like, I'm not saying you guys make everything. And just don't be stupid. But don't trust in that stuff. That stuff is temporal. Read on. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Be rich in what? In good works. Now watch what it says ready. Read on. Ready to distribute. And now when you have, you be ready to distribute. Read on. Willing to communicate. Willing to communicate. Read on. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. You better lay up that good treasures. You better, I'm telling you right now, you better give your arms because they deliver you from sin and death. You be thinking you won't hold on? Go ahead. Clinch that dollar bill. Right when you're having a stroke? Go ahead. What was before? Let's go back. Proverbs. Watch this. We're going to finish this Proverbs and get back. I didn't get to Matthew's yet. Damn. Um, Proverbs 30. 14, Bishop. Yeah. Read 13 now. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 13. There's a generation. Oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. Read. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives. To devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. They will destroy them. They will, they will murmur, lie, steal because they don't have. They would think they would have and be rich and think they're above the laws of God because they trust in uncertain riches. Read on. The horse leech have two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. Read on. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not. It is enough. Okay. So who wants to give a, a, a shot at uh, verse? Okay, do this. Four, I want somebody try to help explain 15 and 16. But what you can do is just leave out the first part of 15. Just explain. I'm going to explain it afterwards. Just explain there are three things that are not never satisfied. Yea, the four things say not it is enough. Verse 16 is explain it. I want to hear somebody explain it to me. Verse 16 explains that. Yeah, you... So you can leave the first part of the verse alone. All right, Shalom, um, Bishop. Okay, the, um, can I start at 15 just to read the 16 again? Yeah. Verse 15. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not. It is enough. The grave. So the grave, people going to keep dying. Yeah. Right. As today we continue to die. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the barren womb. So there are still to this day women... In this very day, the 21st century, that are barren. And, and they want what? And they won't have kids. But, but they want babies, right? Yes, they have okay. that desire. They womb, there's always a womb out there looking for a baby. Read on. The earth that is not filled with water. Explain. The earth that is not filled with water. Ooh. If you understood the other stuff, you understand that. Well, that's, there are still, there's so much water, you know. The and the earth is not what? The earth is oh the earth is not filled as land. We're on land. Right, right. The earth is not overflowing with water. Yeah. Right. There's the water all over the place. Not enough. There's still still space. Read on. And the fire that saith not. California is a perfect example of that. The fire is gonna keep. Yeah. The, the fire never says, "Well, that's enough. I don't want to burn no more." Right. Yes. Is there something there? It's gonna keep on burning. Right. Yes. Okay. Now let's go back up. Very good. Now the top of fifteen. Read it. Proverbs chapter thirty verse fifteen. The horse leech had two daughters. Stop. Okay, so you country brothers out here, we in the city, we got motorcycles and cars. But you country guys, you got horses. 
All right? And donkeys. What is a horse leech? Anybody know? Come on. You Judas better not come up short right now. Come on. Your country. Not one Judah here. Judah, you don't, I mean, uh, uh, Noah, you, it says, what is a horse leech? No, that's a leash. But, that, but that's a, st- yeah, right there. Uh-uh. Shalom, ladies here. Uh, uh, a bridle? No, that's a leash. That's not a horse leech. You think you know? Go ahead. Jacob, nope. Mike. Nope. Okay, a horse leech is, it's a blood sucker. All right? It's what attached to this, especially in its mouth. When it drinks water, it parasites in it and it grabs the mouth and it sucks the blood out of the animal. All right? You understand it? I, I'm instructing you that, you country boys. Damn, you all should be ashamed that you had somebody city. From the city town. I know about trains. Then I don't raise your hand now. I had to instruct you, Judites. I had to instruct you, Judites. Anyway, look what it says about this blood sucker. You know, oh, uh, wait a second. You know what? Um, Ephraim, you call them chupacabras, blood suckers. What is it saying? It's saying there's a blood sucker that have daughters crying, give, give. When babies cry, they say, give, give. What are they looking for? Milk, right? You ever seen a baby trying to nurse how it's trying to find a nipple? It's saying that you have some women that are blood suckers and daughters that are blood. They teach their daughters to be what? Money hungry. They can never get enough. They're covetous. You think a blood sucker just suck a little bit from the horse and say, oh, I'm Phil. It will suck it dry. Like some of these women out here, they will rock, take every dot. All they want is money. And they teach their daughters to be the same way. Girl, let me tell you what you got to do to get that money. Let me tell you, that's a covetous spirit. They can never be satisfied. That's why he says, Lord, don't give me too much, too little. Let me sustain. Because a woman that want will never get enough. Some of these women. You understand that? Yes, sir. I hope none of you are attached to some of these horse leeches. Mm. You think Bobby wasn't talking about these blood sucks? Let me stop. Let me get me say that on the mic. Okay, read verse um, 16. Verse 16. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. What is it? Job 27. Job 27. Job 27. Today they're called gold diggers. Yeah, that's more for your generation. Thank you, because I, I know them as blood suckers. <laughs> uh, 27. Remember it says about the horse leech, their daughters, um, 27.14. Job chapter 27 and verse 14. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. Right. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring will not be satisfied with bread. It's not enough. Jump up in the chapter. Verse 8. Verse 8. For what is the hope of thy hypocrite? Through he hath gained when God taketh away his soul. So what's the hope of the hypocrite when he have gained if God take away your soul? What's the hope? Read on. Will God hear his cry when trouble cometh upon him? <laughs> will he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? I will teach you by the hand of God that which is with the Almighty will I, con- excuse me, will I not conceal? Read on. Behold, all ye, excuse me, behold, all ye yourselves have seen it. Why then are ye thus altogether vain? Read on. This is the portion of a wicked man with God and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. This is the portion of a wicked man. Read on. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword. He said, this is the what? The portion of the wicked man. His children be multiplied, it is for destruction. Read on. And his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. God will withhold things from his offspring and from him. 
This is the portion of the wicked man. Read. Those that remain of him shall be buried in death, and his widows shall not weep. Read on. And his widows shall not weep for him. Though he heap up silver as the dust and prepare raiment as the clay. Though he might heap up silver, what's going to happen? He's going to lose it all. He's going to lose everything. At the end, it's going to be for nothing. All the stuff that he amassed, the Most High is going to destroy. Read on. He may prepare it, but the just shall put it on. He might prepare it, but the just is going to reap the benefits of it. Read on. And the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opened. Let's slow down. It says, I lost my place. Verse 19. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. Read on. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. And he opened his eye, and he is not. What does that mean? Who knows it? The rich man lieth down, and he is gathered. Not the, the rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. Who wants to give a shot at that one? Right there in the back. Go ahead. Shalom, shalom. So the rich now, man. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. State your name real quick, so I know I'm talking to. The Rory. All right. So the rich man lie down, meaning that um he lays down, and he is not meaning that he's dead. He shall not be gathered. Oh, and he shall not be gathered means that he won't get eternal life. The rich man lied down and he should not be gathered. He opened his eyes and he seeth not. Somebody help him. Okay, read. I want you, I want you before, you, before you, somebody explain it. Read verse 17 and 18. Yes, sir. Job chapter 27, verse 17. He may prepare it, but the judge shall put it on, and the innocent shall divide the silver. He buildeth his house as a moth, and as a booth that the keeper maketh. The rich, can you read it, Mitchell? Yeah, read it. The rich man shall lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He openeth his eyes, and he is not. Read on. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stilleth him away in the night. So it says, a rich man lie down, but he shall not be gathered. He opened his eyes. And he is not. Somebody else. Zion, let's see if you... Oh, you didn't have your hand up. Oh, no, in the back, right there. Same one, same one right there. Shalom, leadership. Uh, as far as he building what he... what He uh, he built it, like he gained a lot, and he, he won't... Uh, he won't enjoy. He won't. He gathered. It. Here, here, let me help you understand. You, you want, you want it. He gathered. The rich man lied down. Uh, listen, the, a rich man lied down, but he shall not be gathered. He opened his eyes, and he has not. So all, all that that he had worked for, all that he then built, everything that that he then uh, right. done did, he, he won't reap the benefits of. He will lose it all. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay, he will lose. Uh, verse 20. Verse 20. Terrors take hold on him as waters. A tempest stealeth him away in the night. The now watch this. Uh, read on. The east wind carried him away, and he departed. And as a storm hurled him out of his place. He loses everything. Everything is turned upside down. Everything that he thought, he trusted his uncertain riches. I tell you, sometimes people be rich, and I'm telling you, it take... The Lord could take one day and turn all your riches upside down. Everything you thought you was amassing, you could lose it in, a, in, a, in a, a blink of the eye. The one thing that will always stand true is wisdom. Wisdom never leaves unless you forsake God, and then you lose that too. <laughs> you lose that too. Watch this real quick. I'm going to jump, drop that. Let's go. I'm going to start trying to wrap this up in a second. Um... Watch this. Uh, Psalm seven, Psalms 37. Uh, Psalms 37. Verse 23. Psalms chapter 37 and verse 23. One second, let me get there with you. Gotta read it. 
The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. Read on. And he delighteth in his way. And he de- so it says the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. He delighteth in his way. Read on. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him in his hand. So even though he might fall, he won't be utterly cast down. He may, he may stumble, but he ain't going to be utterly cast down. Because the Lord is ordering that righteous man's step. Read on. I have been young. And now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Listen to what David said. He said, I, was, I have been young, and now I'm old. He's telling you through his life experience that the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. He may have hard times, things may get right, but the Lord is going to uphold him. He says, I've been young, and now I'm old. Read on. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Nor his seed will have to beg bread. He said with all my life experience, he says, when you're right with God, even though you might have hard times, things are rough. He said, you'll never be in a state where you have to be baking, uh, baking, begging bread. You'll never find yourself like that. You think God is not going to take care of us or take care of the righteous? Now watch what it says. Read on. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. It says, he, which is God, is ever merciful, and he lendeth, and his seed is blessed. What does it mean he lends? What is it talking about? He's ever merciful, and he lendeth. Noah? Shalom, Bishop. Mm. Um, first thing we keep in the commandments, he, he, he loaned us like the, our, our body uh, to go to work and, and to make money. And um, that's what he lent us. He lent us uh, the spirit. Uh, okay, what is it? Somebody else help him. He lent us. Right there in the back, in the, next to you, across. He lended, that's going into any of our, our possessions or not our possessions. And, and he lends. Uh, okay. Oh, right, I'll say like Sirach 29, the things that's um, most okay, important. Okay, okay, look this. Right, yes, right, right, okay. If I lend something to you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you need a pen, I'm lending it to you. Yeah, you're not giving it to me, you're allowing me to borrow it. And then what you're going to do? I'm going to give it back in return. Very good. Very good. The Lord gives you, but he just don't give you for yourself. He gives you, but he wants something back in return for it. We always want, want what the Lord said, well, I'm telling you, you want good success, do what I tell you to do. Uh, go to Proverbs, Proverbs 7, uh, 19, 17. Proverbs. Chapter 19 and verse 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. It says, he that hath pity unto the poor will lend to the Lord. How you lend it to the Lord? By helping the poor. So God gave you and you're going to lend back to him. And what is God going to do? He's going to lend back to you. And what you're going to do? Lend back to God. And that's how it keeps working. But some people is a nigga at their own table. They get, get, get. He that's what? He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And that which he hath given will he pay him again. <laughs> that which is given, he going to pay him again. Hey, I'm going to take, take it to some of you all who understand this. Before you repented, when you, some of you out there in the listening world, when you were on the streets, you had to always re-up to keep on getting what you needed. And after you get what you get and you get to fight, you take a portion and you go back and you re-up and then you get more and you go back. That's the same thing God God said, I'm giving you. Now I need you to go back and re-up with me and I'm going to give you back. If you don't, there's no more coming your way. Everybody, that's simple to understand, right? That thing is too difficult to understand. God, to read that verse again. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17. He that hath pity unto the poor Lend it unto the Lord, 
And that which he hath given, will he pay him again. God said, I'm going to give you back. That which he payeth, I'm going to give back to you. But how did you get in the first place? He gave it to you. So then what does that mean then? You may have to cut out some of your wants. Some of your wants you might have to cut out. Here's your needs. Take all what you need, I mean, to survive, chief things in life. But some of the stuff that you want a little extra at, you see a brother in need, that means, you know what? You may have, you may have to say, you know what? I, no, this month I can't buy the new iPhone. You'll stay, your phone still work. Still dial, it still ring. You know what? We're trying to build a school out. We need some, some more equipment in the school. That means, you know what? I may have to deny myself those new Air Max Jordan or whatever they call. I may just, just go without it. I still got other shoes I could wear. Some people don't want to do that. <laughs> they, don't, they just don't want to do that. Drop that real quick, 2 Corinthians 8. Um... No, let's go to Matthew. Let me, let me, because I never went back to Matthew. It's Matthew 6. Let me tackle that real quick. Matthew 6. Because time is fleeting. Matthew 6. Okay. Now, remember we read before Matthew 6 and 9. I'm going to read it myself. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. O Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is thy kingdom, the power, and glory, uh, the glory forever. Amen. So we first acknowledge that God is holy, that we pray for the kingdom to come. We pray for our daily bread. We ask God. Forgiveness of all debts as we forgive those that have wronged us. And we say, lead us not into temptation. Some of those temptations could be those, those, those uh, hurtful lusts that we read in Timothy's, right? Now watch this chapter. I want you to read verse 1. I need you to read kind of quick. I want you to read 1 through 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 1. Take heed that ye do not yourself, your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward for your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now, but, now what does all this have to do with covetousness? Watch how it ties in. It says... Don't do your arms before men to be seen of men. Do them privately. Don't sound a trump in the street to be seen of men. Because if you do, that's your reward. Read on. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. You don't want to be seen. You want to do it in secret. Read on. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. You know? Oh, oh, verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they, they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye need of before ye ask him. So it says, you don't give your arms openly. It says, when you pray, you pray. Don't pray openly. Pray in, in private. All that stuff that you do in open, you want to be seen of men. What are those men? To be seen of men for what? I'm asking. Oh, in the back. Uh, shalom, sir. Um, it's going into, uh, they want to have everybody to see what they're doing and how they're doing it. Uh, that's really uh, a vainglorious spirit. Though. Uh, they want to be the head person in charge. There we go. They want to be seen. 
They covet to be seen as a leader. God is going to open, reward you openly. They want to be appeared to look a certain way before people because they desire and they covet a position to be seen as the righteous. It's an evil spirit, God is saying. You don't move like that. Do things privately, and God says, I'm going to reward you openly. Why? Because wisdom is going to dictate. People are going to see that his spirit is upon you, opposed to you trying to look a part. Watch this. So we read that. We read 10 on down, right? Now watch this. I want you to read verse 16. Verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their face, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Read on. Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For, excuse me, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So wherever, you, so, I don't know if I have time to go through all this, but the point behind it, the, well, let's just read it real quick. I'm going to give you the precepts, all right? Lay not up treasures for your, lay not for yourself treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves break through and steal. That's not earthly treasure. Don't lay up those treasures. The treasure we lay up is what? Durable treasures. Real quick, Psalms, uh, Sirach 29 and 11. Sirach chapter 29 and verse 11. Lay up thy treasures according to the commandment of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Lay up your treasures what? Lay up thy treasures according to the commandments of the Most High, and it shall bring thee more profit than gold. Proverbs 8.18. Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 18. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Right, but you want those durable riches that's going to sustain, not those uncertain uh, riches, you want those durable riches that's going to sustain you. Watch this. Uh, verse 21 back in Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is going to be. That's where your mind is going to be at. Whatever you want. Read on. The light of the body is the eye. Now look what it says. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. It says, but if thy eye be single, thy whole body is full of light. Watch this, Ephesians. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of of his in inheritance in the saints. Right. So the light of your understanding, it says the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So what is that? Wisdom. Let's go back. That's what your eye is. So the light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, meaning you're not double-minded. If the eye be single, the whole body is full of light. Meaning what? Your mind is singular to the Lord. Your whole body is going to be full of light. But what? But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. That means you so far asleep because you're double-minded. Read on. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other. You're going to hate one or love. You can't serve God and mammon. You're going to love one or hate the other. Read on. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Read on. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. This is the point I want to get to. Read on. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. <laughs> is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. What is God trying to show up in we reading all that? He said, don't take thought for your life. 
what you shall eat and drink, nor yet your body, for what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment? What is he trying to convey to us? He's telling you, focus on me. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven first. I'm going to give you. Life is more than food and what you have. Don't get distracted away from serving me. Understand that I'm going to give you what you need. You don't need, remember, God first. Thank you. God first. God first. He said, I'm going to add everything unto you. You have time. You say, there's no rush. You don't have to worry about that food and clothing and stuff like that. I'm going to provide for you. Now, here's the thing. In all minds, how we work is like, well, how's that going to happen? How's that going to happen? I need a job. I need a job now. Keep my commandments. But, you know, Lord, I'm keeping your commandments. Exam yourself. Are you patient? Sometimes you have jobs that you can get, but you think it's, it's, it's beneath me. Your behind is broke. You take that job. It may not be making what you want, but you're bringing something in. Opposed to just sitting around, or I won't work at McDonald's. As to Maybe that's what God has to offer you right now. Maybe that's what it is. I won't take a certain level of job. Stay broke then. Stay broke. Sometimes the answers are right in front of our faces and we refuse to see what he have there. He may have you down for a minute, but it may not be for long. Or we'll have it as long as that's what it is. But in the meanwhile, you can sustain yourself. So he says, take no thought for your life and what you shall eat and what you shall drink, nor yet what your body and what you shall put on. It is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Is that, more than, is that not life more than that? Now watch what he says. Read. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? He says, now look, behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather together into barns, yet your heavenly Father feed them. Who can explain it to me? What does that mean? Same brother. Ain't nobody else in Go ahead. Shalom, leadership. The most, uh, most high just saying uh, the simplest things. Uh, I created all of that. I, I create the, the heaven. We know that he created the, the heaven and earth. But the Let, let's stay with the fowls right now. The fowls of the earth. The, the fowls, fowls of the, the earth. The fowls of the heaven. The I'm, of let me read it real quick. For it says, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly father feedeth them. So they don't have no job. They don't, they don't work. They don't do none of that. And he provides. So right. same, same for, for Right. Us. So think about a bird. You're right. A fowl. A fowl is flying around in the air. The fowl didn't put worms in the ground for it. He didn't do nothing like that. But the worms are there. And he's flying and he's able because he has wings to see and he goes down and he gets it. They don't take thought of that. It's just there. God said, if I feed the fowls of the heaven, how much more are you? The, 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 that fowl doesn't put thought to where it came from. It's just there. God is saying, I'm placing things in, in front of you. It's already there. I'm going to have it for you. Just be patient. Wait on me. Trust. If I'm going to feed a bird, you're my people. I chose you. There's going to be things there in front of you, right there for you. You just got to do me first. That's all he's saying. Read on. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Which one of you, just by thought, can add a cubit to your statue and make yourself six foot? Which one of you could just by thought? Read on. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not. Neither do they spin. Well, and what you take consider for raiment, like you, like you consider raiment, like you just worrying about clothing. clothing. Why are you like that for? He said, he said I want you to, if you always buy, I got to get these Jordans, I got to get this, this, and whatever. When you got that mind, you desire like that, that's what turned people into criminals. You see people, you see people at the shoe store ready to fight and kill each other to go get a pair of sneakers. They'll kill you over a pair. 
Do they do that still in this generation? Yeah. yeah, they'll kill you over a pair of sneakers. He said, look, I want you to consider the lily. What do you say about the lily? Lily, it says, they toil not, neither do they spin. Read on. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. What does he mean by that? Shalom leadership, Ferrari. Um, he's saying that um, a lily looks better than King Solomon in all his glory. Why? How, how does a lily look better than Solomon? Um, because God made it that way. He fashioned it the look. How, how? Okay, right. But how, how did it? Okay, right. But how that lily looks better than him? And we know God fashioned, but why? A plant looked better than Solomon? Solomon said, I'm comely. I look good. What is he trying to say about the lady? Now watch what it says. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, even the lily, uh, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Why was the lily considered better than Solomon? A lot of hands now. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Leadership. Right there, brother with the beard, right next to him. Just go right there. No, don't stay right here. Don't stay right here. Oh, I never heard you before. Let me hear you. Yeah, you, you. Shalom, leadership. Uh, Your name? Uh, Brother uh, Stephen. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the lily is uh, it's natural. It's like plant, uh, from the uh, heaven of God. But uh, Solomon, uh, what he done is like he built his, you know, uh, in other words, the lily was from the, from the earth. And from the earth, and the lily, I mean, uh, Solomon, well, he's built here to have no patience or not, but the lily had patience to grow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Abishai. Hey, Shalom, Bishop. Uh, the lily played its role, and Solomon didn't. Okay, and what role was the lily had to play? Uh, the lily's role was just to grow and build lily. The, the, okay. Now, I know you're trying to say that's you're trying to say the same thing, but here's the thing. The, the lily didn't toil. It just stayed there, and God watered the earth. It didn't go look for nothing. It was just there, and it grew. It didn't have a thought. It just knew that God put me here. He provided for me, and I grow. Now, opposed to Solomon now, it says, and yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. What did, he said Solomon wasn't like that. Why? Solomon waxed fat and he kicked. He tried and he dabbled into idolatry and all the things that he was not supposed to do. God gave him everything and he was not suffice with it. I don't want to go through that. When you get a chance, read the book of Ecclesiastes and explain that. He said Solomon wasn't even as good as these lilies. But at the end, Solomon came back and understood the whole duty of man is to fear God. And that's how you what? Give me that real quick. Oh, yes, sir. Sirach 12. I don't know. No, Ecclesiastes yeah, 12. Yeah, I don't know why yes, I had sir. a brain. You know, but in my mind, as I'm saying Ecclesiastes 12, I'm meshing other scriptures in there. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Right. Solomon had to come back and realize at the end of everything that the whole duty of man was fear God. The lily just stayed in, got wet, got watered, and he grew. Solomon had, and he thought it wasn't enough. Read on. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? He's trying to say, your faith is little, man. Your faith is little. Don't you know I'm going to supply your needs? He says, if therefore God had clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is in the oven, grass grows, it dies, it's over. He said, how much more of you? He says, Shall he not much more clothe you? So when you are here worrying about having clothes, 
What you worrying about those things for? God said, I'm going to give you the chief things in life. If you serve me, you're going to have it. I've never been in this school, in, in not one of our schools where I walked in and a brother was sitting here butt naked with fringes on. I've never seen that one time. I've seen brothers homeless before and get places and get homes and doing better than a whole lot of other brothers. Homeless don't have nothing, don't have a meal to eat and trusted in God. And now today, the Most High has shown them favor and they're doing good. Why? God said, do me. Plain and simple. Read on. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. The heavenly Father know that you have need of things. Read on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. What you do is first say that God is holy. You ask for God's kingdom to rain down on earth. God, bring forth your kingdom here. Give me this day my daily bread. Lord, I want you to forgive me of my debts as I forgive those that have sinned against me. Lord, lead me not into temptation. Take away people that's trying to move me in a spirit of covetousness and envy. Let me learn to be content with what you have for me. Because at the end, we're going to die. This ain't going with us. And we don't give a damn about this kingdom anyway. We want all this to go up anyway. So to hell with what this world has to offer. Now I'm going to come back full circle about treating yourself good. Because some people go too far and they have some good and they'll just give away everything to everybody and they just be broke. Don't be stupid. Don't be the Christian mind. <laughs> Bible ain't talking about that. With all things, get understanding and how to be a balance. All right? So let's read on. Let's finish this off. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Read on. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Read on. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Because tomorrow is going to take thought of the things of itself. Because you, it, you may not live to see tomorrow. So in this day, you serve God, you thank God, and if life lasts, tomorrow will be there. But don't worry about it, because tonight might be your last meal. Read on. Sufficient. Until the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient. Read that part again. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Sufficient what you have in this evil day. You good. In this world is evil, you good right now. All of us should be praising God and thanking him. Do you know there's a brother today that, his, that God required his life? And he's gone, a sister that God required in life, and he's gone. And we worrying about what? What we have or what we want? You better be glad for what you have. Watch this real quick. Uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians 11. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, I should say. So you got to ask yourself, do you have a covetous spirit? And ask yourself, is it what you want or what you need? And I guarantee you, in many cases, it's going to be what you want opposed to what you really need to survive. Now watch what God says, um, 8 and 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 8. I speak not by commandment, but by occasion for the forwardness of others and to, pr and to prove the sincerity of your love. So I speak not by commandment, but by occasion of the forwardness of others and to prove the sincerity of your love. Well, now your sincerity of your love is going to be proven. It's going to find out. Read on. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Who can explain that? Now, I wasn't to my... Okay. Okay, who can explain it? Shalom, leadership. Brother Joshua, can you read it again, uh, officer? Yes, sir. S 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, 
that ye through his poverty might be rich. So uh, what Jesus Christ had did for the, for the nation of Israel, he gave up everything. He, he sacrificed everything so, so that we may get everything in the kingdom back if we keep his laws, that's his commandments. So the faith in, in Jesus Christ and uh, what he did for the nation of Israel. So he became poor how? Say it again. It says, um, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that through, it says, but that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. Being rich, uh, going off into uh, uh, the mo we had everything. No, he was rich. What does it mean he was rich? Uh, Jesus Christ? Yeah. Was he balling? Was he what? Was he rich? Yes, sir. He had... He had rich, he was. rich child. Let me see if somebody can help him. All right. right there, one of you. Somebody. Right here, let me hear this young man right here. No, right here. Yeah, this, this young man right here. Now, this young man right here. No, 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 no. Not that, that young man right there. No, 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 young man right there. You, you see, he doesn't even know he... I'm talking about you, Abishai. I'm trying to give you a compliment. Damn. He's like, you certainly can't be me. Okay, give the old man the mic then. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Come on, Paul, Paul. Help us up. Uh, Bring us home. He was rich because he was... He was uh, Christ made everything right. in the beginning. Right. So he made himself on the same level as us so he could be go through the same temptations right, right. we go through. He, he is the power. He created all things. It wasn't about financially rich, but he made himself poor. He came down on a base level to give us a chance to elevate up to his level, to become one with him. Very good. Okay. It was an analogy. Read on. Verse 10. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Read on. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it. That was there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which he had. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it. What? Perform the doing of what? Whatever you spoke about doing a year ago. Perform the doing of it. That there was a readiness to will. Because in that time, you had a readiness to will to do it. So there be a performance also out of that which you have. Now perform what you said you had a readiness to will, what you said you want to do. Some people talk a good talk, but when it's time, their mind ain't there to do it. Read on. Verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man has. Now first, if you got the willing mind, it's accepted to what? According to what? Accepted. According ac to that a man has. It's accepted according to what you have. Read on. And not according to that he has not. And not according to what you don't have. So what is that trying to tell you? If you have a willing mind, you give according to what you have to give. You can't tell me you're sitting here and you're worth $500 and you give, let me say this, forget worth. You have an excess of $500 in a paycheck. I got $500 extra a month I have that I don't have to spend. And you turn around and you want to give God $2. Well, so sparingly, you shall reap sparingly. You can't tell me you worth $2 and you say you don't have nothing to give. You got two dollars extra for the for the month. You may after all your bills are paid, you got two extra dollars. All your gas money for the month is accounted for. All you got is two extra dollars. And you say, I don't got nothing to give the Lord. Lord said, You got two extra dollars. Where's mine? Remember, that's called extra money outside of what you have. It's a little bit. I know I'm the one who gave it to you. Give me mine. Give something. People be hard to give. And then they go to the store and go buy a, uh, what's they buy? A Red Bull or a Magnemate or whatever you guys drink, foolishness. You go take that and go buy some candy. 
God said, I want mine. Give it according to what you have. Read that verse again. Yes, sir. Verse 12. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. God said, I don't want to hear about what you don't have. Give me according to what you have. Oh, I only have $2 because, you know, I'm, then give me part of that $2. That's what I want. Where's my pizza for that? Because I gave you, I gave it to you. That's your extra. Read on. For I mean not that other men be eased and ye be burdened. No, he said, I don't mean that other men be eased and you'll be burdened. Meaning you got to throw the weight on taking care of everybody else and you'll be burdened. Read on. But by an equality. But by equality. Read on. That now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want. That your abundance might be a supply for their want. Their want or their need or what they lack. Your extra that you have can be an abundance for what people need. God said, I gave you a little extra. Now re-up with me. Lend to him, to the poor, and I'm going to repay you again. I'm going to tell you something. That is a foolproof way based on the Bible to always stay in God's good graces. Keep his commandments and always help him. Help him give a little bit of brother, brother, right here. God said, I'm, I'm going to take away some alms. Give me that scripture about alms taking away sin or, or something like that. It's a rock or whatever. Deliver from one of those. That one too. You stay where you at, uh, um, Razi, uh, Razis. Read on. Second Corinthians chapter eight and verse fourteen. But by inequality, that now at this time your abundance may be a supply for their want, that their abundance also may be a supply for your want, that there may be equality. That there, so you supply and you for their want. That in a time when you need. Their abundance be a supply for your want. So now what you got to reason in your mind is your wants versus your needs. We all want a nice home, a place to live. We all want nice things in the house and a TV and the little amenities. And then guess what? After you get all those things, then what? You know when Christ come back, it's all burning up anyway. You ain't taking it with you. You know when you die, you can't take that 70-inch TV into that coffin with you. You won't be watching TV in there. <laughs> More than likely, you're going to leave in your house, and some next size 15 Negro is going to be sitting on your couch, hugging up your wife, watching your TV. <laughs> Damn, that must hurt. Big old foot sitting on your couch that you pay. You can't take it with you. You better lay up durable treasures so on that day, God can say, my faithful servant. There you go. There you go. Leave a TV for some next, let me stop. Next nigga sitting watching your TV. Yo, babe, pass me the remote. Verse 15. <laughs> Verse 15. As it is written, he that hath gathered much and nothing over, and he that hath gathered little had no lack. He that gathereth much have nothing over. You understand that? And he that gathereth little hath no lack. And he that gathereth little, he has no lack. Why? Because one got for the other. One is there for the other. You don't have overages. You don't have it. All right? Let's go. Somebody found a scripture I'm looking for? Yes, sir. Tobit chapter 12 and verse 9. Let's go. The book of Tobit chapter 12 and verse 9. For arms doth deliver from death, and shall purge away all sin. Those that exercise arms and righteousness shall be filled with life. Damn, I like that. Well, let, me go, let me get there with you. I want to read that one more time. Uh, let me just read that with you. Yes, sir. Read it again. Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 9. For arms doth deliver one from death. One second. I want you to start with verse 8. Yeah, start with verse 8. Verse 8, prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. A little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness. It is better to give alms than to lay up gold. It's better to give alms than to lay up gold. Read on. For alms doth deliver from death and shall purge away all sin. So you better, if you a sinner, boy, you better repent, keep these commandments, start giving up alms. The God is telling you, I'm telling you how to fix it. Read on. 
Those that exercise alms and righteousness shall be filled with life. And guess what? God just don't want your money. Because God said, I'm the one who gave you money. I want alms and righteousness. Because some of you think you could buy yourself out of this sin you're doing. And you ain't being righteous. That's what the church do. You be tithing and tithing. Thinking, God said, no, you still be at this. Still be wicked as hell. God said, no, 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 no. I want alms with righteousness. Give me my money and get right. That's what you got to give me back. That's a good scripture right there. Read on. But they that sin are enemies to their own life. And that's a scripture Bishop just sent me earlier about, um, about sell their soul. I think it was Rock 10. Sell their soul through covetousness. So let's um, back to um, Corinthians. Yes, sir. Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 16. But thanks be to God, which put the same earnest care into the heart of Titus for you. For in uh, let's stop. I'm finished right there. Yes, Go, uh, remember it says um, um, the equality, where is we at? Yeah, uh, that uh, was let, verse 14. Bishop. Let me think of the, my wording, what I want to say. Okay, don't read that yet. Uh, go to um, okay, verse twelve. Verse twelve. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that he hath not. Watch this, Mark twelve. <clears throat> Mark twelve thirty-eight. Mark chapter twelve and verse thirty-eight. And he said unto them in his doctrine, Beware of the scribes which love to go in long clothing and love salutations in the marketplace and the chief seats in the synagogues and the uppermost rooms at feast. They want to be seen. They, they, they want to be seen of men. Read on. Which devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. So these are going to receive greater damnation. They devour widows' houses and for pretense make long prayers. These shall receive a greater damnation. Read on. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. And behold, how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. Remember it says alms and righteousness. It says, but and some of the rich, they cast much money in. Read on. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him. Unto him his disciples and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. He said, These men cast a lot of money. All these Pharisees, these men had a lot of money. They cast and they was rich. He said, But this woman, she cast in a little bit she had. And guess what? He said, she's more righteous than them. People think they can buy themselves. That's why he says arms with righteousness, because you can't buy yourself into that. Some people try to absolve their sins by thinking they're going to pay for it. God said, man, I'm the one who gave it to you, dude. What are you doing? How about you be righteous along with it? And how did you get those, how did you get those riches in the first place? <laughs> Watch this. So now I'm going to turn the gears up, and I'm going to start wrapping up. In the, man, give me another half an hour, I'm guessing. What time is it now? Oh, we got time. Another half an hour. Um, we're gonna we're gonna speed through these. Um, Philippians three, real quick. Count loss. Yes, sir. Look what Paul said. Philippians chapter three, verse thirteen. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But no, 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 no. Uh, three and eight. Oh, no, no, three and seven. First Corinthians, I mean, Philippians chapter three and verse seven. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. He said the things that were gained to me while, while I was doing good, he said I counted lost for Christ. It don't mean nothing to me. Read on. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus you, my Lord. You got to choose one or the other. He said... Doubtless, I count all things. What? Yea, doubtless, I counted all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. He said, what is he saying there? You can't serve two masters. I count everything lost to, for the excellency of the knowledge. 
to get this now to understand Christ was the Savior and all that comes along, I'm going to have to lose position. I had to lose. Remember, Paul was, was high up amongst the Israelites in, in stature. So I'm going to have to lose all this. And all that's going to go with all my riches along with it. But that's a trade-off for the excellency of the knowledge that he had. I'm going to tell you, brothers, something right now. And for your sisters. There's a price we pay for this understanding. Hope you'll understand that. As you grow in understanding and in wisdom, there's a price you're going to pay for that. It ain't free. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? No, you guys don't understand. What I, mean. I know you guys understand what I'm saying. Who understands what I'm trying to say? All the way in the back. Oh, no, no, let me try something different. Who else raised their hand? Yeah, that's same. Oh, no, in the back. Yeah, that's right, right in the back. There's a price you pay for this wisdom. Yep. The price you pay is if you keep the wisdom, you'll get eternal life. If you lose it, you get death. Right. But what's the price you pay to get it? You can lose family. You can lose friends. You can lose your job. You can yeah. lose your life. There you go. I hope you understand that. It's a price for it. You lose your life. Don't think Esau going to make us climb up in this kingdom and we rebuking the nobles in this gates. We're trying to bring down this kingdom, destroy this instead of crisis kingdom. And think they're going to let it go like that. There's a price to pay for this. You better be ready to lose everything. But you can't if you got to covet your spirit. You won't. It's too much. You're not going to be willing to do it. You have to learn to live with, you have to learn to live with minimal. What do you think Paul was doing? Traveling. Paul had a home and everything. That stuff was gone. He was on the road. He was traveling all over the place. Price. So where we at? Verse 8, Bishop. Read on. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. If you got that mind, then you'll never be held hostage to the things that you have. But now watch this. Now I want to try to give some balance to giving and doing that. Sirach 14, verse 10. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 10. A wicked eye envieth his bread, and he is a niggard at his table. My son. One oh, second. One yes, second. Uh, Sirach 14 and 10. Yeah, start again. Verse 10. A wicked eye envieth his bread, and he is a niggard at the table. My son, according to thy ability, do good to thyself, and give the Lord his due offering. And what? And give the Lord his due offering. The Lord is a balanced God. He's not, he said, do good to yourself. He said, you, you make money, do good to Take care of yourself. But then do what? And give the Lord his due offering. But you better give the Lord his due offering. But why would a, a, a man not give the Lord his due offering? Verse 9. Verse 9, a covetous man's eye is not satisfied with his portion. Because a covetous man's eye will not be satisfied with his portion. Read on. And the iniquity of the wicked dried up his soul. And because he's not satisfied with his portion, his iniquity will dry up his soul. Next verse. A wicked eye envied his bread, and he is a niggard at his table. And he's what? And he is a niggard at his table. And he's a nigger at his table. Drop that. Go to Sirach 5. 5 verse 18. Uh, no, uh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 5 and 18, I'm sorry. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 18. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he had taken under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for, this, for it is his portion. What verse was that? Verse 18, Bishop. Right. Read on. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. This is a gift of God. God said, I'm going to read it again. He says, Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and drink, and to enjoy the good of his labor, that he hath taken on the son all the days of his life, which God hath given him, for this is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth, 
and hath given them to him the power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to take his portion and to take his portion. And after you take your portion, where does the rest go? I can't hear you. It goes to who? Damn, he's got my shirt. Let's try this again. After you take your portion, the rest goes to who? Jeff Bezos, you said? <laughs> it goes to the most high. The rest goes to the Lord. Here's a, here's, here's a little, let me, let me peep you on something. If you give to the Lord, the Lord is going to give us back again. That's the game. Give, give, give. That's how it goes. Give, come back. All right, read on. It says, and if you take his, po- I lost my place, his portion and rejoice, it says, eat thereof to take his portion and rejoice in his labor, this is a gift from God. Read on. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. He shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. When things were bad, because he knows he takes his portion, enjoy it, but get good and right with God. All right? Watch this. Um, a um, few more scriptures. Hebrews 13. I'm going to wrap it up on these three right here. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he said, he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He said, now look what it says. Let your conversation be without covetousness. What is covetousness? Who wants to tell me? Okay. Huh? So long officer is talking too much. No, covetousness. It's taking everything for yourself. Right, okay, being greedy, right? Desiring something that's not yours, right? Look what it says the verse before that. Read the verse before that. Verse 4, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. You know what? You ain't happy with what you got, but you want another man's thing. It says what? Read next verse. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't let your conversation be with covetousness. You're trying to take something that's not yours. Try to take a woman that's not yours. Read on. And be content with such things as he have. And be content with what you have. Read on. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God said, I'm going to give you what's yours, but be content with that. But same man's eyes is not what? Satisfied with their portion in this world. Well, here's the trade-off for that. Job 31. Job. I want 31, verse 1. Job, chapter 31, and verse 1. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? Jump to verse 9. Verse 9. If mine heart have been deceived by a woman, or or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, then let my wife grind unto another, and let others bow down upon her. So what is that saying? Who understands? I think that's plain and simple. Somebody explain it. Read on. Dad, right there. Whoever this is. The long officer. Joe is saying if you yes, go sir. out there and fornicate, the next man can take his wife and fornicate eye for an eye. Okay, that's why it says. Now let's go back to Hebrews 13. Verse 5. Yes, sir. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. Be content with what God gave you. Read on. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. He said, the Lord is my helper. God is going to give you what you need. Two more scriptures. I want to read 1 Corinthians 12. Thirty-one. First Corinthians chapter twelve and verse thirty-one. 
but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show unto you a more excellent way. Now, God said we, we are to covet, but covet the best gifts. What gifts are that? The gifts of prophecy. Covet desire to learn how to become a prophet. Desire to learn this Bible that you can instruct God's people. Have that desire, that earn, that yearning to be the best servant you can be towards God. He says, but cover what? But cover earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. First 1439, the same chapter. Verse 30. Verse 39. Verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing. No, no, 1439. Oh, 1439. First Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 39. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophecy. Covet to what? To prophecy. And forbid not to speak with tongues. And don't forget people to speak in different languages when you do. But covet to prophecy. Those are the best gifts you want to cover to. Prophecy. Read on. Let all things be done decently and in order. And all things should be done decently in order. The Most High is a God of order and structure. And everything is going to be in time with him. His time. So we are supposed to learn to understand what we want versus what we need and make sure that we're not overcome overcome with a spirit of covetousness and envy to the point that we would destroy another man, take steal, rob, lie because some people have become that and lost everything alright so with that I pray that the class was edifying that you all received something from today's lesson ok say it, come on you guys say it tell them, real quick Hey, shalom, shalom, family. For all you brothers and sisters online, just wanted you to know that our YouTube channel was uh, shut down by the haters last year. So this time around, we had to uh, restart another channel because you know that they ain't stopping this truth. So what we need right now is for you brothers and sisters online to help us support and subscribe to our new official IUIC Austin channel. All right? What is it? IUIC Austin. Yes, sir. IUIC Austin. Yeah, come on, help us out, man. Help us help you out so we can get this word out and spread out the earth. Everybody, you on Instagram, TikTok, whatever, you, just subscribe to the stuff and help us get this word out, all right? There's little you could do. We'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, so with that, we say, as you stay strong in the Lord, stay encouraged, like Bishop stay, spa, study, pray, and apply in your life. And watch us bring about a change. Fire. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.